Welcome to part three of our mini series, Introducing Logic Pro X as part of a bigger series is Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. And uh, today's particular video, we're gonna be covering the difference between virtual instruments and recorded um, audio, which can be instruments or samples or anything of the sort. So um, I'm gonna go over the difference between the two, what you should use, what you shouldn't use, and why actually it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting topic because um, when working with electronic music, um, well, I'm talking about electronic music, not like digital music. I'm talking about like EDM. When work th working with EDM, you're going to use a combination of virtual instruments and audio. You're not going to be just stuck with one. You can do just one or the other, but um, that's not typically um, – you know, the case it's, it's just, uh, it's so much more convenient to work with both. And, uh, so you kind of need to learn the difference between the two. So the first difference we have, I have the kick drum selected from the, um, previous project that I've been showing off in the, uh, in the past two videos, really a crappy project because not much in it, but, uh, for the sake of the, uh, just the explanation of logic pro, um, it, it's kind of useful. So we have the kick drum selected anyway. And, uh, right now, if we look in the channel strip, there's nothing really here. And this is when we're going to start getting into the channel strip here and everything that it does. Uh, but for, for the simpler part, um, we're just going to look at uh, the one part that uh, makes up an audio track. Right here, this is the theoretical input, which is right now, it's my microphone. So if you look down here, you can see this is my microphone and this is what I'm getting from it. So the, because this is an audio track, I can record to this. And um, it doesn't uh, it, it, it doesn't have any um, limitation by way of what I could put in it when it comes to recorded audio. So um, I could also switch back to the virtual instrument that I have here that we've been putting notes in. And if you look at the top here where it would have said um, input, it, it has this thing called uh, EXS24. Goodness, what is that? We'll get into that in a second, but for now, um, just the difference is this one's got a physical input to where I could record stuff using my microphone, as you can see down here, whereas this one, it has some sort of something that we're going to look at in just a second, and you can't see my microphone anymore. We cannot record actual audio to this one. That's the difference between the two. So um, right now, uh, I'm going to pull up the uh, EXS, and uh, it, it's it's this is what... Uh, you'll see a lot of you have um, a a window here with these general you know tools settings whatever you want to call them and then a window with your virtual instrument in it. This is a sampler, which means that it plays audio files based on what notes you put. So um, you get those sounds when you play back audio files through this. Now there are actual instruments that generate audio. Those ones are um, a lot more customizable and you can, um, you can create a wide variety of things from them. Whereas this, you're kind of limited to whatever the sound starts with and you could, you could tweak it up a little bit, but not too much until you get into um, layering the channel strip here, like what's going on and you could create really, really funky stuff. So um, now to go over basically what uh, what you're gonna do with the two and um, which ones are important for which things. Now, uh, as as you could probably tell, I have um, I have a kick drum down here, and that's my audio file. Typically, you're gonna find drum samples. That's a snare, a kick, um, any sort of percussion uh, is gonna be in this audio file. Um, Whereas instruments can be in either audio or in virtual instrument format. And um, uh, before going into that, I'm also going to I'm going to talk about vocals first here. Vocals are pretty much never in a virtual instrument format unless you're doing one of three things. One is turning a vocal into an instrument and um, making it so it uh, it. It, it just so it's for instance you get a, a an a sound and then you could play it up on the notes and you go a a a a a a a 
So that's that's one of the things. The second thing is you could create a um, an instrument that sounds like a vocal using virtual instruments. That's a, that's that's kind of a unique case because it's not actually a, a vocal, but it sounds like one. There are ways to do that. It is very difficult to do it well. Um, now the alternative to that is kind of a midway in between. You create something called a vocoder. And what that does is you take an audio file and you link it up to it using a certain method I'll talk about later. And, um, and then you play a synthesized sound, um, behind it. And then what you get is this, this synth sound that's shaped by the voice and it sounds, well, if you listen to the introduction of my videos, that's a vocoder. The electronic voice, that's a vocoder. That's what it'll sound like. Um, so, the, so that's 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 the exceptions for vocals. Instruments, uh, typically, you're going to have them in electronic format. Um, you're going to have it so that they're a virtual instrument because when you're working in electronic music uh, with EDM, electronic dance music, you are using mostly electronic instruments. Now, there are cases where um, artists will use guitars, like uh, Cruella, the her. Uh, or their track, I guess it would be, uh, Human. Uh, it starts out with this guitar. That's not an instrument. Well, there's possibly a way that they could have done it with a... Uh, uh, no, I said that wrong. That's not a virtual instrument. It's possible they could have done it with that, but just because you could, it is kind of easier to make it sound right when you actually use a real instrument and record it, that's probably what they used. But otherwise, if you're getting like um, a synthesizer sound that you found and you're putting it in as an audio file, that's, uh, that's kind of cheap. So there's ways to do it creatively to where I say that was creative, not cheap. Um, but for the most part, your instruments that are playing the music are going to be electronic because that's the nature of electronic dance music. So um, uh, now there is uh, with I, I talked about how audio files can be vocals, instruments and drums. And there's also an in-between uh, that's kind of like almost like a mix between drums and um, and instruments. Uh, and that's effects. When you have effects, you could create them with either virtual instruments, as we talked about above, or you could you could um, have a audio. Uh, they're typically called audio samples because it's not a whole song it's like it's like a sample a portion of a song except for uh, they're actually not taken out of the song or any song they are designed as a standalone sample so those uh you could get like something that you know those uh huge impact sounds where it sounds like this explosion or or uh really if you if you listen to the intro video that was a bunch of samples that were in logic for the most part um, and each of those sounds are just kind of chopped up and mixed them up so it sounds interesting. So uh, I actually did create um, this kick drum stamp sample, for for example. I actually created this. Um, I, I got um, a couple kick drum samples that I um, that I thought were okay, and then I made a kick drum that I actually liked. So uh, why well, I, I didn't like start from scratch. I did create this to some degree. So, um, so it's, it's, it's the idea for audio that you're taking something and it's becoming part of your project. It's not like, um, it's not like, you know, you're just using the audio for the sake of using the audio cause everyone is going to hear it and they're going to recognize it. That's not cool. What, what audio is for is for becoming a part of your project and, um, and, you know, and just unifying it all because you can't have just electronic instruments. You need to have some sort of drums and you can do those electronically with, uh, for instance, this is uh, the folder as I, t as I was showing before, it's actually a folder of instruments that are drums. So um, you could play those using this note system, but, um, but, Really, it, it kind of, it's easier to manage when you're working in audio files because you could store everything and sort it. Like when I showed you with the uh, in the browser, I have my kick drum right here, which happens to be down my samples folder, and I have a whole bunch of sample folders, including design samples, which is the one that it was in. And that that was that's my um, that's my folder. I'm going to be start start putting all the samples that I've designed into. So um, so it, it's 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 a way of organizing things and finding things and like. 
if you want to uh, preview the sound of a kick drum that I have right here, so I just click the audio uh, speaker right here, pre-listen, and then it plays it. But if I was going through here, I'd have to um, I'd have to create a MIDI region and find out where the kick drum is. Okay, so the kick drum's right here. I want to create a MIDI region. Okay, now where is the kick drum wrong here? Okay, so that's 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 the kick drum. Um, and then I need to go to this, uh, okay, so it's a kick drum. So basically you're seeing how complicated it's getting. Even though this is virtual, um, a virtual instrument, I just kind of, I, I'm just, I, I'm just caught up in everything that I have to go through. And I can't just like go cycle through, for instance, I'll go through some samples here. Uh, if I go through bass drums, I could play this just cycle through all the sounds it's so easy so um so that's kind of the reason why you want to stick with um uh with audio files for um for drums uh and uh instruments for um for uh virtual instruments for the for the rest of your stuff it's because uh you don't want the instruments to be loops of already made stuff that'll just dominate your song and you don't want your your drum samples to be overwhelming because you have to go through so, so much stuff and you have to um, open up folders, create stuff and just, uh, you know, get caught up in all that mess. So so there's a way, there's a reason you have two of them. It just makes it more convenient. And um, like I said, virtual instruments, you're stuck with, um, you're stuck with using whatever is up here, whatever plug plugin you have loaded. And um, for the, uh, for the, audio you can either record something or you could drag something as i showed you in the first video where you have your files and you just go in whoop, whoop, and drop it in and then it throws it in there so um, that's the difference between the two that's uh what's what is better for which things now it's not solid rules here it's just generally speaking for if you've never been into this and you're not really used to everything that's going on so uh that's it for this time i know i've gone a little bit over time but i uh, hope you enjoyed that and if you liked it um feel free to subscribe and uh and keep the comments coming um I, those are really encouraging and um and i will uh answer as many questions as i can and uh Enjoy working in logic with what you know so far.